So if you've been using Flutterflow to build your applications, the fine folks at um, Flutterflow have a beautiful video that shows you step by step how to build a ChatGPT clone. And then they followed up with another video that ex goes in, into length to describe how the code uh, works and why you need to handle uh, streaming inputs in a very unique way. Only problem is that this code doesn't work and if you scroll down, um, you'll see a couple of things. People are not happy with the fact that um, the application is not available in the marketplace. Hopefully, uh, I'm gonna try to push uh, this into the marketplace and they'll get approved. I'm not gonna charge it. It will save you a lot of time to create the, um, the manifold for the application. But more importantly, you'll see that people are also mentioning that although they've been able to build it and follow step by st step, that the streaming does not work. And there's a reason for that. There are several uh, bugs and uh, things that were overlooked that um, I've been able to fix, and I'm going to walk you through those changes. So with that, let's get started. Um, I'm going to have two tabs here. One is the uh, new stream API response, and the other one is the original one. Let's have that open. And I'll start by quickly reviewing what you should have seen if you watched these two videos I, sh I presented earlier, then you should be familiar. I'll just go quickly through the code. So remember that um, we're defining a, a browser client and instantiating it. And then uh, we are creating the um, headers. You'll notice that the thing that I've changed uh, in my codes is that I'm pulling the API key from an app state variable. So if you go into your app state, um, you'll see the API key here as a variable. Just put in your API key and, and you're good to go. Back to the function. So we're looking at the original function. You see that we are then constructing the body and then <coughs> we're um, listening to the incoming stream. This is the crux of where some of the, the problems are. Uh, up, to, up to now, everything is fine. We're constructing a call to chat GPT to the open AI using uh, stream equals true and nothing here needs to change. The problem is with the response. The problem is that when you are listening, um, there there is a possible there are two things that can happen one you might be receiving a truncated message that gets complete in the next batch or incoming uh, stream and two they may there may be more than one response block and i'll uh, explain what i mean so i have uh, a capture of a subset of chunks now not all of them but just to to give you an understanding uh, if you remember, the, these come as sets of JSON strings. So you get one row with the uh, data with JSON string, and then you get another one and another one. Um, the problem is that you might get, for instance, a truncated JSON string that looks something like this. So it ends with kind of a non-finished JSON, and that means that this is an invalid JSON. So attempting to convert this will break your um, app. What will happen is that you might have another um, buffer fill up with more of that string and maybe it'll finish this or and maybe it'll continue to the next chunk. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is that you might get all of these, all three of these chunks, one, two or more in one um, in one batch. And uh, the problem is that the original source code, which was here, only looks for, um, sorry, the original source code. The original source code only looks for one instance of uh, data and it grabs the JSON part because we're splitting the incoming stream using the string data colon. And that means that you will get um, object number zero in the returning array is, the, is the, the text data and object number one is this. But if you're getting all three of these at once, then object number zero is this, object number one is that, object number two is this, object number three, and you're missing them. So that that is an important fix. So I'm gonna walk you through uh, my updated code. 
um, and I'll show you a couple of the changes that I made um, before and after this the the, the streaming tap. Uh, one of them is, as I showed you, that I'm grabbing API key from a variable. It makes it easy to maintain the API key if you need to change it. Second one, this doesn't change um, much. Uh, I just compacted the code so that the request is assembled um, with the URL or URI and the headers all in one statement. And there's a little debugging here. And then we have um, the setting up a empty string in the ad uh, in the chat history app state that has author as assistant and content is blank and this is what we would fill up with the completed response here is where the crux of the changes uh, are the first one is i'm establishing a buffer this is a buffer that will allow me to grab what's coming in and if it's a partially completed response then it'll get accumulated until i have a valid va a valid json that i can pass on it also allows me to clear this buffer with all of the process JSONs and and leave in it any truncated JSON at the end that can be processed um, by the next call. So here is the the stream listen event, and what you have here is uh, okay. Let's grab what's waiting in the um, in the response cache and load that into. Um, into the buffer and I'm converting it into a string so I can manipulate and look at uh, um, look at it further. Now if I find any instance of the string data then I know I have one or more data chunks and therefore I start by splitting um, all of these um, chunks one or more and looping through them. Now I'm counting the number of process blocks because if I, uh, by the time that I process these blocks, I'll look at the first one and you know, let's say that this is a valid JSON uh, done. I process the second one and I see it's a valid JSON two. I get to the third one and if it's truncated, I won't be able to find a valid JSON. Then I will want to trash the other two and post this back into the cache so that when it's completed in the next uh, iteration of the listen event, I'll get a valid JSON. That's essentially what we're doing here. So going back to the code, um, for each of these JSON, uh, potential JSON blocks, if it's valid, then push the content uh, of the response into the chat history and increment the number of process blocks if it's not valid, then it's going to this. The truncation will only occur in the last uh, chunk. So we'll have a valid, 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 and then if it's there's a truncation, it's the last one because we 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 called exactly when it was truncated. So I'm going to reconstruct that JSON truncated JSON block and uh, add the the data preamble so that this is what we can. Uh, re-instantiate the buffer string. So we're going to clear the buffer string and if we notice that we have a truncation, which means we have less than all three chunks um, in an example I gave you before, then we're going to take that reconstructed buffer string that we saw and place it back into the buffer, get a little alert, and then hopefully the next time you get into the listen event, you will get the rest of it. That's essentially it. I added some more event handlers here for debugging purposes. Uh, you can play with it. Here is the function to validate the JSON. Essentially, I'm just doing a try catch, um, trying to decode the JSON string. If not, uh, then I catch it and I send a, a false. Um, the other thing I want to point out to you is that I've modified slightly the add to chat history function and the structure of the cons. And that is an anticipation that I might in the future want to uh, um, send non-streaming version, uh, non-streaming requests. So I would take out the stream true, and what I would get is not uh, a chunk. I would get the fully uh, formatted response. So um, uh, take a look at the API for. Let's look at the Open AI API so that you can understand the difference. 
So this is the uh, API documentation. So by default, when sorry, what, in, when streaming, you get these chunks, and that's what we've been uh, looking at, right? Are these chunks? Um, and the last one of those chunks will have a, a stop finish reason. But if you don't request a uh, streaming response, then the response structure is completely different. It it has it follows this structure. So what I did is I modified content response to uh, accommodate for that type of structure. Um, it allows you to um, have a uh, message construct with a role in contact. Um, and then when you are uh, looking at the chat history, sorry, when you're looking at the add to chat history, this is the original uh, block that the flow to flow um, video has. And um, this is in the case of a chunk. In the future, if you want to be able to handle a non chunk response, a non streaming response, then um, the code will um, add, add it um, validly without breaking your workflow. So this essentially is how this code works and i'm gonna show you next what it looks like when you run it in visual studio uh, sorry in android studio so let's open up android studio and uh i think that we are running let's see um let's see hi how are you There you go, and you can see it's streaming. And just to show that, I'll show you how it not only is it streaming, but it remembers content context. Um, I would like to travel to Spain. So now it is hearing, it's engaging in a conversation with me about travel to Spain. Sorry. And then, um, um, what is their capital? So it should remember the context that we're talking about Spain. And there you go, the capital of Spain is Madrid. So that concludes the demo. Um, please uh, put your comments, notes, suggestions uh, in the comment section below and uh, hit subscribe. Thank you.